I would be honored to respond to a question from Senator the Senator from Georgia. I, I'd like to ask the Senator, you mentioned a little bit earlier about the um, previous attempt to slow the growth of Medicare. I remember during my House days, it's probably been a decade or more ago when the uh, Senator of New Hampshire was on the Budget Committee on the Senate side. We were looking at a rapid growth of Medicare at somewhere in the seven to eight, nine percent rate. And what you're talking about is that in order to try to achieve a balanced budget and to make reforms in Medicare, instead of it growing at that rate, we were going to reduce the rate of growth, not reduce the amount of money, just reduce the rate of growth to about 5 percent per year to help achieve a balanced budget and at the same time continue to provide the services under Medicare that we do now, uh, that we did then. I'd like to ask the Senator, what, what do you think is going to happen here if we're not reducing the rate of growth, but we're in this plan that's coming out of the Finance Committee that will be on the floor, and the one that came out of the Health Committee that will be melded together with that, there's going to be a reduction in Medicare spending by about $500 billion over 10 years. Will we be able to provide the same services under Medicare that we do now if you reduce the amount of money spent on Medicare? Well, well, the Senator from Georgia asked a very appropriate question because the practical effects of the reductions which are being proposed is that people who are on Medicare Advantage, which is a program that many people, seniors like, uh, will be eliminated. They will no longer have the opportunity to use Medicare Advantage or it will be contracted so much that it will be a shell of its former self. Uh, and this is being done not in order to make Medicare solvent, and there are very severe issues about Medicare solvency. It's being done in order to move that money over and start a new entitlement for a new group of people who are not seniors and who have not paid into the HI trust fund, the health insurance trust fund, and who, are not tr and who have no relationship at all to Medicare. Senator New Hampshire has been here a lot longer than I have, uh, both from the House and your service in the Senate. Have you ever seen a mandatory spending program that's been created by the federal government uh, reduce in spending? Well, you know, the Senator asked another good question. No, is the simple answer. I mean, we all know that once you start a mandatory program, it always grows and grows significantly. Uh, and that, of course, is why we're in such trouble here as a nation, because we have a number of mandatory programs to which so much has been added that we simply can't afford them any longer uh, under our present structure of a government. And now we're going to take that problem and compound it by $1.8 trillion, which is pretty uh, irresponsible of us and fiscally irresponsible, but it's also irresponsible to, in the sense of stewards of our children's future because our children are going to have to, are going to inherit a government that can't be afforded and they're going to get bills or they're going to get a devalued dollar. If the chair would allow me, I'd like to ask you another question about Medicaid. Uh, the proposal coming out of the Finance Committee to the floor of the Senate has a huge effect on my state and I'm sure that it's a similar effect on your state. And that is this, that the eligibility for Medicaid will move from 100 percent of poverty level to 133 percent of poverty level, which will add to the Medicaid roles a significant number of additional individuals uh, all across America. In my state, where the federal government will pick up the tab for the first three years, there's going to be an additional cost of $1.2 billion dollars for those additional Medicaid-eligible individuals in Georgia. Now, beginning in the fourth year, the state of Georgia is going to have to pick up that $1.2 billion. And let me tell you, we have a, a – you're a former governor, and I, I assume New Hampshire probably has a balanced budget requirement, as we do. We are furloughing teachers today. We are furloughing state employees. We are – uh, having schools that are operating four days a week instead of five days a week. We are doing everything we can to decrease spending at the state level and even below that to try to make sure that we achieve that balanced budget. If we as Georgians are asked to come up with another $1.2 billion to fund a health care program, we simply don't have the money to do it. I'd ask the Senator if if you have any kind of similar situation in New Hampshire. Well, the senator from Georgia 
is expressing a problem which I think most state governors are extraordinarily worried about, whether they're Republicans or Democrats, which is that this bill, as it, as it, as it starts up, it covers the additional people who will be pushed into Medicaid, which is about 20 million nationally. Uh, but that coverage drops off in the out years, and it will put many states in dire straits. I, I, you've talked about the numbers in Georgia. New Hampshire will have the exact same problem, only we don't have a balanced budget minimum. We're not that foresighted. I wish we were. So we already have a problem. I mean, we're already running major deficits in the state of New Hampshire. And if you throw these med new Medicaid costs on, you are basically going to make it very difficult to do things like uh, spend on your school systems, especially your in New Hampshire, our college systems and our mental health care systems, uh, which are key to our quality of life in New Hampshire. So uh, this will be a massive unfunded mandate. I saw the number $33 billion as being what the states will end up picking up here over the 10-year period. Now, that's a big number for states to pick up. Uh, and it will put massive strains on straight budgets. And uh, it is another example of the federal government saying, here, look at the wonderful things we've done for everybody and then sending the bill to the states, which is totally inappropriate. Yeah. Lastly, if I could ask one more question um, uh, through the chair. As we reform health care, and 100 percent of the members of this Senate agree that we need to reform health care. We need we have the best delivery system in the world, uh, but it can it can get better. Uh, we can have a better delivery system. We have the best insurance system in the world, but it needs reforming. It can be made better. Uh, does the senator from New Hampshire, who is I know familiar with the details of the plan that came out of the Finance Committee, know of any provision in that bill that is designed to reduce the cost of health care delivery in this country, which will help make that system better, which will help make the insurance system better by making premiums for insurance more affordable to folks who can't afford it today? Well, the senator from Georgia leads in the way I wanted to close this discussion, because I think there are ways to do exactly that, what the senator from Georgia is suggesting, which is there are ways to reduce the cost of health care in this country and to make it better, make it better. Let's take, for example, malpractice reform, abusive lawsuit reform. None of that is in the Finance Committee bill. 